Hello there. Uh, this is my first video of 2018, um, and uh, hoping to uh, do more of these kind of little chats over the next few months. Um, no, just not enough of you are watching. You know, I'm not in it for the hit count, thank goodness. Um, but uh, yeah, if you like what I do, please leave a comment. If you don't like what I do, please leave a comment so I can improve. Um, and if you do like it, t tell people about this. Anyway, uh, enough about me. I want to talk about the death of the actor Peter Wingard, apparently at the age of 90. Uh, apparently, I'll elaborate on why that, that is a bit later. But uh, he is most famously associated with the role of Jason King in two uh, TV shows, uh, Department S here, and there is uh, Jason King there. Um, and the eponymous uh, Jason King TV series that, that happened a few years uh, after the making of Department S. And he is um, uh, a fantastic actor and character. It's one of these uh, times when the actor and the character kind of merge. And you don't know where one begins and one ends. Um, they just become intertwined. Um, Wingard was already a, a very good uh, established actor, particularly in British uh, television uh, from the late 50s through to 1968 when they began work on Department S. Um, I think one of the best things I ever saw him in was a 1961 horror film called The Innocents. Well, he doesn't have any lines of dialogue, it's a completely silent part, but his malevolent presence in the film is uh, very creepy indeed. Very different from what he would end up doing on Department S. Um, and what I love about the Jason King character, I think it's the apogee of a, a, a type of character from the Lou Grade kind of stable. And uh, even though um, Lou Grade didn't produce every uh, TV series of that era, his, um, his studios made so many of the action detective shows of that time and influenced so many others. So a, a 60s show like Adam Adamant Lives is not a Lou Grade production. But it's clearly influenced by the kind of things that were going on at the time. Um, some people think the Avengers was a Lou Grade thing. It wasn't. It was its own entity. But these shows all kind of influenced each other. They came out of the time. And I think that Jason King was the, was the pinnacle, um, the apogee of, of a particular type of character of that time. Flamboyant, witty, intelligent, uh, good fighter, suave, flash, um, you know, sort of uh, uh, classically educated, but hip with the times. And you, uh, and very English as well, full of English eccentricities. And also quite sexually aware as well. Um, so what you have is that um, you can say that, say, John Steed of the Avengers is the epitome, or Simon Temple of the Saint, or, or another Roger Moore role, uh, Lord Brett Sinclair from The Persuaders, or Randall and Hopkirk Disease, any, any one of these characters. But for me, it's Jason King, because he defines an era from the, the psychedelic uh, late 60s through to the garish early 70s. He kind of exists in this time capsule. He couldn't have existed before or after. Um, maybe he could have existed in the 18... 10s or 1820s Regency dandy era, possibly, but he is very much a man of his time, and they run with it. I mean, even by 60s standards, the look and behaviour of Jason King is quite excessive, and that's what I think is part of the appeal, that nobody could be like Jason King except for Peter Wingard. Nobody could live like that, look like that, speak like that, except Wingard himself. I mean, I'm a child of that era. I was born in 1967. By 1973, when Jason King was primetime TV, you know, I was five to six years old. And I can remember that. I can rem like, I, I grew up in West Hampstead. <laughs> and there were, there, were, there were the smell of jostics, incense, people in crushed velvet and flared corduroy. I mean, it was everywhere. I have more some of it myself. Um, I was surrounded by it that era, you know, in, immersed in it. But there's something about Wingard that's even, even to my memories of that time, living in that time, 
is, you know, it's excessive. And I loved it, the flamboyance of uh, Jason King. And looking at the old episodes of Department S, I noticed that Jason King is quite the paper tiger as well. He bigs himself up. This was what was great about the character, was that he wasn't all perfect, all knowing savant. That was actually the Rosemary Nichols character. She was actually more the savant than Jason King. But he always took the glory, he, he, because he's this famous novelist turned detective. Or was it the other way around? Um, and, it, it, you know, he, he would claim credit where he, he didn't deserve it. He puffed himself up to be all-knowing and all-competent when he wasn't. He was lazy. He would often fob things onto um, Joel Fabiani's character, Stuart Sullivan. Um, and, you know, it's terrific. I think one of my, my absolutely, is my favourite moment in Department S. It's in one episode where he goes to interview this beautiful lady, suspect, who, who knows something about the crime they're investigating. And he goes to meet her in her flat, and they're having that kind of, you know, the witty, sexually tinged banter. And then the goons show up and say, ha oh, we're going to beat you up now, Mr. King. And so the door shut, and you hear the sounds of fist fight. Boof, black, black, black. And then the door opens, and Jason King steps out, and he adjusts his tie, right, and then immediately collapses. It turns out the goons won. But King manages to just make his demise uh, flamboyant and glorious. I just love it for that. And it's, and looking back on it, um, it you know, it was inevitable that I, I think that Wingard could never move on from that. Because, as I said, you know, he was becoming synonymous with Jason King. And then things started happening in his personal life. I mean, I'm not going to talk about the incident in the public toilet with a truck driver uh, in 1975, but the thing is, he, he really falsified his backstory. So he was born possibly 1927, um, but he claimed it was 1933. He uh, grew up uh, early in Singapore, but he claimed it was somewhere else, somewhere you know, actually less exotic than Singapore. Why would he... <laughs> Um, falsified that. Um, he's denied that the man who was his father was his father. Um, and he, you know, his life, real life was actually very interesting. He was interned in a, in a Japanese prison camp along with J.G. Ballard. You know, they ch there were children growing up under Japanese uh, imprisonment. Um, well, I think that's an interesting story, but he kind of played it down and he denied it and uh, stepped to you know, stepped around the issues, and then, you know, his sexuality, um, he claimed he was bisexual, other people said he was out and out homosexual, not that it makes much of a difference, except that, you know, in that time, in the 60s, it was uh, illegal until 1967, and then, and kind of, he could have come out, but he didn't, he played Jason King very much as a virile um, heterosexual, um, even in one episode, he makes a disparaging remark about homosexuals, in it. But you could tell that he was never going to transcend that that role because he became too enmeshed in it. It was his personal fashion choices. It was his personal um, decisions about how to play the character. Eventually, he couldn't take direction. He was Jason King. He knew better than anybody else how to play the part. Um, and you know, producers would have ditched him had it not been for the success of both series. Um, and when they did pull the plug on the series and going to the mid to late 70s, he was left floundering. And then there was a scandal that kind of, you know, put the kibosh in it. Um, which is a shame because, you know, he was a talented actor. Um, and he sort of inhabited um, his roles. Um, but, you know, like a lot of actors who nail their colours to one mast um, with a character and, and then don't move on um you know and then after that really his most notable role is clitus in uh, flash gordon and then i think he made a very good langdale pike in the uh, adventures of sherlock holmes with jeremy brett but um r.i.p peter wingard i will watch uh an episode of department s i might six days is a good one um what's the one with the uh, people who are who look in their 20s but they're actually 50, 60 years old and they have to go red Bulgarian wheat. I like that one. Okay, until next time, I'll see you later. Spread the word.